About a year ago, I bought this T962A reflow oven from Vivor. And wow, it took me a year before I got around to taking it out of the box because I haven't been doing electronics projects for a whole year. And finally, I had some board ideas. So uh, I've got PCBs on order, parts on order. And I thought I'd set up my reflow oven today. For some reason, I just hate it when they start videos with, let's get started. So for this video, I'm going to say, engage. I bought the 110 volt version. And they say it's 1500 watts, rated for 1500 watts. And I thought when I ordered it, okay, that's fine. I only have a 15 amp circuit to put it on that fits on a 15 amp circuit. I don't have anything else going on really on that circuit. I've run my kiln on that circuit. And so this is no more power than my kiln takes. And of course, I just won't run the two at the same time. But what I wanted to mention was something that scared me. I'll show you is if you look at the back panel above the uh, pl place where you put the power cord, it says 16 amp fuse. And I was like, no, we can't have that. I mean, I, uh, I who, who would make a device that has the rated for 1500 watts, which is like 13 amps, and put a 16 amp fuse on it. It's just an odd, an odd number. I mean, it, it should be 15 amps or whatever, right? But not 16. So uh, I did a little research trying to figure out, well, is that real? But someone says it comes with a spare fuse. So warning, when you get the power cord, it's wrapped in plastic. And I just pull, tore the plastic off and threw it away. Someone says it comes with a spare fuse. Well, there's no spare fuse in the box. So I assume it was in the packaging with the power cord. And yes, I go went to my trash can and fished out the plastic. And there's a spare fuse. I'm glad I rescued it. So when you look at that fuse, it says 15 amps. So that's a labeling problem. Maybe some other version uh, of this device needs a 16 amp fuse. But it, in fact, in my case, has a 15 amp fuse in it. And so I will just ignore what's printed on the back. It's just a little crazy. The device itself, you know, is a lot of the time it goes into Chinese characters. But you could see, watch other videos. People will explain that. You can switch between Chinese and English, but there's bounce in the front panel switches. So when you switch around due to bounce, you might end up in Chinese characters. So what what is the term... It's not really English when, when you read the manual. So maybe the 16 amp label is just part of that confusion. I did some measurements with my kilowatt meter. Now my basement is pretty cool or cold. And on wave two, which is the curve I think I will be using, the initial warm-up, when the lamp first comes on, it goes to like 13.05 amps for a bit. But then it comes down to about 13 amps. And then for the rest of the cycle, whenever the lamp comes on, it goes to just under 13 amps. When the lamp is off, it's only 0 0.04 or 0 0.05 amps. And it's something nice about it. It's not like it, it's not using like a relay to turn the lamp on. It's coming on kind of soft. So it 
uh, at least according to the kilowatt meter, it ramps up a little bit from whatever from 0.04 to about 12.8 something amps. So that's nice. It's not going to put spikes and surges on the uh, AC line. When the lamp is off and the fan comes on, it's only 0.3 something amps. Uh, so the fan doesn't use doesn't use much. Now they say this one needs mods, and I was skeptical. the The one mod that they say you really have to do is it has some paper heat tape in there, uh, sealing the the insulation against the cavity. And they say that's no good because when it heats up, it, it, it emits a horrendous odor and probably bad chemicals. And like I said, I was skeptical because some people gave reviews saying, oh, yeah, I had to do all these mods. And other people say they used it right out of the box. So I was like, well, maybe those were early ones and maybe the manufacturer updated it. So I thought I'd give it a try without any mods and I regretted it. So I will say that chances are if you buy one of these ovens, you should at least open it up and look inside. And you, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about how to do that and what you're looking for. So I ran it a few cycles and it made a lot of smell. At first it wasn't so bad, but then I didn't realize that the, the, the smell rises. So it wasn't so bad near the device, but it got bad as I went up the stairs. I, I have it in the basement. So there are other mods that make it perform better, and I'm lazy, so I'm going to try to see how it works without them. So... It looks like, according to its notion of what the temperature is, it looks like it tracks the curves really well. And so, but there are mods to make it perform better. There's mods to make it more evenly heat. And uh, I may eventually do that, but right now I want to just try some test boards. I'm, I'm building a single board Z80 computer, which is quite an elaborate board, and I didn't want that to be the first board for that oven. So I designed a, a smaller board with a few of the circuits that are needed for the Z80, also to test them, and that turned out to be a complicated board too. And so then I designed a simple two chip board which is an 18 mega 2560 and a USB to UART chip. I forgot the number. Uh, maybe I'll look it up and put it in here. Uh, so it's just a 2560, a UART to uh, a USB to UART chip and header pins so that I can program the bootloader on the on the 2560 get a bootloader there and then use the normal Arduino over USB uh, program download it's a very small board if it, it will attach it can attach to a breadboard and uh, I, I'll show a, a picture of of what the 3d model looks like it I made it odd shaped because the 2560 is too big to put on a breadboard, to fit on a, a board on a breadboard and and then be able to hook up to it. So what I did was make it key-shaped. And so I, I'm assuming this is going to work. So the narrow part with the headers on it should plug into a breadboard and leave it one or two... Um, rows above each pin available 
on the breadboard. At least one pin. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if I'll have two pins because I guesstimated the width of the actual board. Uh, I've got the pins in the right positions, the header pins in the right positions, but I don't know if the overhang is going to cover up one of the holes in the breadboard. It's a nice tiny little board uh, which is suitable for experiments with this reflow oven. Uh, I'm using Osh Park and I get three copies of the board. Uh, I bought enough parts for three copies of the board, actually more, but I have three uh, 2560s. I'm, I'll probably do a video about what am I going to do with my 2560s. I bought them a year or two ago and I had uh, made the mistake of unsealing the envelope and I didn't realize that these are moisture sensitive parts and so I put them in a Ziploc bag with the indicator card and by now the indicator card turned pink on one of the dots that needs to be blue. The top dot is blue but the middle dot is pink. So they say I, I need to bake it. So I'm gonna have to look into how to how to bake chips to uh, prepare them for not being uh, too moist for reflow. So that's more than I intended uh, this video to be, but uh, it's just kind of an update and some information about that reflow oven and what I'm up to. If the AT Mega 2560 board works, I will post it, the design, someplace and uh, give it away for free. Uh, the design. I don't, it's not anything special. It's actually inspired by so many other different boards that are out there, like uh, various, I looked at various people's projects for 2560s, and I looked at the data sheet for the UART, the USB UART, and I looked at other people's usages of that chip, and so this design is not really my design. It's a, an amalgamation of a lot of other people's designs. But if it works, hey, I'll, uh, I'll let people have it because it's pretty, it might be pretty handy. The, it, it'll have a lot of data pins and there's, I think, three analog or three or four analog pins on it that I brought out. Um, and I have use for it and I find that uh, a lot of the micros that fit on breadboards uh, don't don't have a lot of data pins, uh, GPIO pins, and potentially the 2560 can have many many GPIO pins. A future version of this board, I might put more headers on it to bring out all the pins. Okay, this video has been too long, so thanks for listening, and I will be posting more along these lines.